and welcome back to the channel of motoring nonsense you join me in the pit of britain's oldest go-kart track and um i've got hyundai suv now that would normally be a recipe for boredom and not very good things but this is the all new hyundai kona n and n is the important bit n is to hyundai what m is to bmw they're the people that make hyundai's cars really good fun so you're going to join me for a review a walk around and a bit of on go kart track action in the new hyundai kona n and i'm going to try not to make any conan the barbarian jokes or conan o'brien jokes or arthur conan doyle jokes well i am but i've done them all let's just get going here it is then, the Kona N in all its sonic blue majesty. That's a new colour for Hyundai's performance SUV range. This is a £35,395 car. It's got a similar 2-litre petrol engine to the i30N, which means it's got 280 horsepower and it is front-wheel drive. But despite being front-wheel drive, it's quite quick. 0 to 62 only takes five and a half seconds. It will go on to 149 miles an hour. Uh, to help it do that, it's got limited slip diff at the front and an eight-speed dual-clutch gearbox. And, uh, well, look at it. It's blue and red. It's got massive brakes. It's got lovely wheels. Sorry, a bit of my shadow there as well. We shadow fetishists, you can uh, save that one for later. And you get these red trims along the side. Now, this is probably going to go up against the likes of the Ford Puma ST, but this does cost about seven grand more, and it's about £5,000 cheaper than the Volkswagen T-Roc R, which is obviously four-wheel drive, this is only front-wheel drive. This does get adaptive dampers as standard, and in traditional Hyundai sense, you get lots of other stuff as standard, such as radar, cruise, a loud exhaust, a fancy stereo, reversing camera, all that kind of stuff. The front grille is kind of this see-through kind of airmail pattern. You've got these fake grills there for a bit of rally inspiration. And yeah, I quite like it. It doesn't actually look like an SUV. It's a bit like the Puma in that it's quite a low SUV. Let's have a look around the back if I can get the camera to work. It gets 19 inch alloy wheels as standard, which are obviously reasonably lightweight. And it's got Pirelli P0 rubber on it. I mean, that's a statement of intent, isn't it? Proper serious track rubber on an SUV. You've got big fat exhaust, which are both real. And I can confirm they do pop and bang. That's pretty cool. And you've got multi-link rear suspension. So again, Unlike the Puma, which is a lot cheaper, to be fair, that's only got torsion bar rear axle, this has got proper multi-link setup, and as I said, adaptive dampers. Let's talk about the boot briefly. The boot's a pretty reasonable size for this kind of car, it's 361 litres, and you can flip the rear seats down, that's 1,143. Uh, let's have a quick look at the rear passenger space, and up front, and then we'll just take it on track and see what it's like. I have driven this already, and uh, can confirm it goes around corners on three wheels. Right, obviously this is a reasonably small SUV, so I'm not really expecting to have tons of room in the back, but let's get in. Ugh, grunting as usual. Um, I'm sort of all right. I've got loads of headroom, but my knee room is, um, yeah, that's my driving position. This is a left-hand drive on. My knees are jammed up against there, but I have got motorbike jeans on because I rode up on a Honda Goldwing to this event. But yeah, um, you're going to be a bit cramped back here if you are tall, but... It's got icy fix. It's got a little center pull down armrest with cup holders and all that kind of stuff, but it's, um, it's all right. It's got a USB down there as well, but let's go up front because that's where the magic is. Up front, the Kona N kind of feels like a normal N car, but the steering wheel feels really small. I think it's because we're in an SUV and it's not a huge steering wheel, but you've got buttons to switch between N mode and your custom modes. And this button, which is NGS, which is one of many, many acronyms that start with N in this car, NGS stands for N Grin Shift, and that's basically like Porsche's sport response button. You press that and you get 20 seconds of sharper throttle mapping, sharper gearbox mapping, and you can only use it once every 40 seconds. And it drops it to the lowest possible gear of the eight that you have. You've also got something called N Track Sense, which is um, a gearbox pattern basically that is designed for track. It's super sharp and apparently based on motorsport data to help it shift down and realize when you're on track and do all that kind of stuff. And you've got something called N power shift, which is basically a fast shift when you're using more than 90% throttle. Basically, it's fair to say they put quite a lot of effort into making this eight-speed dual clutch work really well in a sporty SUV setting. Right, let's start it up. It is quite a rude, loud thing, especially in N mode. And it bloody loves a bong as well. Now, I tried to show you this on my i20N review, but yeah, when you put it in N mode, 
you get flames around the taco for a second and it gets a lot louder and you've got custom modes and all that stuff. Oh yeah, you've got a 10 inch dash and a 10 inch infotainment screen. Now, this is the real sexy menu in any Hyundai N. You go to N mode, you actually press it, not just wave your hand vaguely near it. And then you've got loads of gauges to show you your throttle percentage, your brake pressure. Got my foot on my brakes, can I get to 100? There we go leg bay but here is where you set everything up so you can set the suspension up the electronically controlled linted slip diff on the front axle stability control you can turn fully off and as i said you've got adaptive dampers so you can set it up how you want transmission head up display i was in sport does that mean off because i didn't actually realize this has one and you've got launch control and so many menus you can change when it's shift lights come on your end power shift settings track sense shift Oh my God, so many things that begin with N. Basically, like the i30N, you can spend ages setting up and then map your favorite setting to this button down here. But yeah, it's basically, basically it. It feels right in here. I mean, this is rubbery. Uh, that's quite hard. I'm, oh, I'm being a dashboard wanker. I'm sorry, Hyundai. But yeah, for a 35 grand car, it feels just about okay. But the digital dash and everything kind of makes up for it. And let's go and drive it. Right, driving the Kona N is as simple as pressing the start button, pulling it back into drive and taking the manual handbrake off. The manual handbrake is not as sharp as the one in the Puma ST, so it's not the best for um, dicking about. Right, onto the go-kart track where I can give you some serious consumer advice. I'm in N mode. I'm going to wobble about with my moobs because it's not a dignified thing going fast in a car. Let's work out where we're going. Wait for everything to stop rattling about. First thing I should say is this feels proper quick. 280 horsepower, 392 newton meters of torque. And it's the torque that you really feel because it is a punchy little thing. It is quick and it drags itself out of corners really well with that mechanical limited slip diff. And you might be thinking this is completely irrelevant taking an SUV around a go-kart track, but um, yeah, well. <laughs> it goes around corners on three wheels like a Fiesta ST. I like that. <laughs> As I point out, it's on proper sticky Prelli P0 rubber. So um, yeah, that front end does grip really, really well. And I would say it does feel a bit, well, a bit more childish than the i20N and i30N. It's kind of got a character all of its own but the brakes are still phenomenal i'm not doing massive speed on this go-kart track because well it's a go-kart track and i don't want to bend it but everything about it it's got serious components but quite a relaxed attitude to life if that makes sense sideways through there sideways through there yes you can lift off and get it to kick out sideways i've got esc in sport mode so i've still got a safety net but you can I don't remember the last time I drove a small SUV that you can just get sideways on the brakes by trail braking. And my hazard lights are on. Gearbox just doesn't get in the way. I'm using the paddles, they're plastic, but that's fine. Um, you know, I expect metal paddles when you get over 50,000 pounds, but this is under that. Pull out of there in second gear and go. That's 70 miles an hour. Hard on the brakes, chuck it in on the brakes, the back steps out. <laughs> I didn't think I'd have this much fun on a go-kart track in a Korean SUV, but there we are. Bug it in, get the back end out, turn in late here. Sorry, I'm just saying words now. What I mean to say really is I'm about to take this out on the road and do the sensible stuff, but this has proven that Hyundai has made a small SUV that is hilarious. Uh, floors. I wish the steering was a little bit quicker, but I'm on a go-kart track, which has got lots of tight corners. The exhaust note, it's just a four-cylinder noise, to be honest. You do get the occasional pop and burble on the downshift, but they're quite muted. The original Y30M when that first came out was hilariously loud, but now we've got petrol particulate filters and everything else. So yeah, other than that, this is the most entertaining SUV I think I've ever driven this side of a Lamborghini Urus, and that is saying quite a lot. Anyway, enough irrelevant go-kart track SUV nonsense. That was a nice pop and bang. I'm gonna head out on the road and tell you about the sensible stuff. Right, I've done my ridiculous nonsense at the go-kart track. 
Let's talk about the road driving. You have a little drive selector down here, which you twist and you can press in to switch between traction modes and drive modes. And before you get excited and think, oh, it's got a drift mode, that's gonna be great. The traction modes are just things like snow, mud, gravel to help the front wheel drive cope and the gearbox cope with slippery surfaces, which is quite cool. So I'm just gonna leave that in normal. The drive mode, oh no, I've put it in snow, hang on. I've put it in normal. You have eco normal and sport, and obviously they changed the adaptive dampers in this car. And I drove up here from Caffeine and Machine in normal mode, mostly, uh, apart from these big skid marks that I left doing launch control. Anyway, I didn't see those. And normal mode, this rides really well. And you could absolutely live with this day in, day out. It isn't too bumpy, it isn't too crashy. Yet, when you are driving it normally, you are always aware that you're in something that has been engineered to be a little bit sporty. And I don't mean it feels crashy or anything like that. It just feels kind of solid in a way, yet it still rides nicely. Um, I kind of found this with the i30N and with the i20N. Hyundai knows how to engineer their sporty cars to feel a little bit special. And not many manufacturers at this price and at this level can do that. It's still fast though. Yeah, yeah, it's still fast, even in normal mode. And we're breaking through a corner in normal mode. The grip from that front axle is really, really good. And the steering has kind of got a nice satisfying weight to it. Again, like modern cars, you don't get much feel through it, but you get enough to chuck it into a corner at uh, ambitious speeds, shall we say. Thank you, Mr. Cyclist. And accelerating over broken, bumpy roads like we have so many of here in England, you just feel it hunting out for grip like a honey badger that's not had any badger lately. It's kind of a hungry badger. And you feel those front wheels trying to find grip, which is quite a good thing. There's not too much torque steer. You sense just enough of what the front axle is doing to drive quickly with confidence. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm more impressed by this than any other SUV at this price I've ever driven. I've driven the T-Roc R years ago before I did YouTube, and that was fine, uh, but it's not a terribly exciting thing. It feels faster than this because it's got four-wheel drive and 30 horsepower more. But I would have this every day of the week. This is the king of the affordable driver's SUVs. Although, obviously, you could argue, is it an SUV at all? Because it's not that tall. But hey, it is what it is. The infotainment is fine, it's Hyundai's latest thing, so it's sharp and it tells you everything you need to know and it's quite easy to navigate. The screens are a little bit laggy when you're prodding it, which is, yeah, I wish they weren't, but there we are. And the digital dash is really cool and it does that flamey taco thing, as I've said. Um, not tacos, but tachometer, Ta tachograph, <laughs> that's the one. The last car I drove on these roads was the Aston Martin V8 Vantage Roadster. I'll tell you what, I've got more confidence to go fast in this than that. This has just got such a good feeling of grip. That's amazing. It can read the road signs and it read that there's a double twisty bend coming up. Do I want to put it in end mode? It just asked me at the dashboard. It said double twisty bend sign. Do you want to put it in end mode? <laughs> Hyundai employs proper petrol heads. That is genius. I think, well, that's kind of blown me away. That's a cool use of existing tech to make your driving more fun. Good. Anyway, enough waffle from me. Back to you, Tim, for an outro, where you're probably just gonna say the same things you've said, but outside. So that's the end of my first drive with the Hyundai Kona N, and I'm so impressed. Hyundai's just on a roll at the moment with making driver's cars that feel special from platforms that, you know, are designed for your gran. Now this has got a brilliant front end, super grippy, but it's got a really nice mobile back end so you can skid it around and be a bit of a lunatic with the stability control switched off or in sport mode, but that mechanical front diff, amazing for pulling you out the corners. And obviously you've got the driving mode so you can really kind of make it your own. But the good thing is that although this is a 35 grand car, it comes with pretty much everything you need. So the adaptive dampers mean that it's comfortable when you're not driving like a tit and it's got car play, everything else is just, it's just a good package. And um, yeah, I really, really like it. So well done Hyundai, another end car that is bloody good. Can you do a crap one just to make this a bit less boring and repetitive? 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please hit like down there. It really helps me out. Uh, leave a comment calling me, um, no, I can't say that word, something nice. And um, do subscribe as well for more of this coming very soon. Thank you and goodbye now. Go and drive your car around a go-kart track because it's quite a lot of fun.